at this bike. Who lets a bike get this dirty? My bike made the whole Cocopelli Trail, but I didn't. And I'm going to explain that as we go along here. Myself, my trusted sidekick, and my son Jonathan set out from Colorado Springs to Grand Junction. Three days and 150 miles of mountain biking. Some of the most mind-boggling scenery you will ever see in your life. Dinner, day one. The question today is, what are you looking forward to on the ride? Uh, I want to make it until breakfast on day number two. Surviving and thriving. Uh, I'm looking forward to Western Rim. Suffering and companionship. Oh my goodness. It's six in the morning and time to get up. Welcome to Fruita, Utah. And this is the start of the biker pally ride. Everybody's showing up at a little place called Mac, park their cars, get ready. So we're here at the start of biker pally with the Gates Belt Drive Company. You want to tell us about these unique drive systems you got? Yep, Gates uh, Carbon Drive's been out for like 12 years, maybe close to 15 now. Um, probably 10 guys all on belted bikes matched with a pinion drivetrain with a 12-speed internal gearbox, which is a great solution for a situation like this. You're never going to bend your derailleur hanger with a gearbox, and so it's shifting is awesome. Belt drives are super durable. We're just out here to prove it and have some fun. All right, and we'll, we'll see these guys on the trail, so we'll see how they actually hold up. Uh, so I like to say that this is the Home Depot of bike trips. It's everything you need and nothing you don't. The whole idea is that we handle all the details for you so that you're just free to get on your bike and pedal all day. In the grand scheme of things, the first day is your technical day. The second day is your big miles day. And uh, your third day is your climbing day. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is where we start the fruit or Coco Pelly loop. The reason why I like this ride, it's got just so much of everything. Some challenging riding, some fast swoopy stuff, but most importantly, the views. Look at that view. Colorado River all the way down there. And you can see people up along the rim over there. Spectacular? Yeah. What do you think, Jonathan? Beautiful. Hey. Howdy, howdy. on the edge here. Impression of the morning so far? So hard.
in meadows. And next thing you know, you're right along the edge of a cliff. We've got to go way down there, across the tracks. Unfortunately, my son's bike broke down halfway through the morning and he needed to be evacuated out. We met up with him at lunch. Luckily, they were able to fix the bike. Camp over there, right along the hillside. After lunch on day one, you can you have two options. You can either take the Rabbit Valley Road to camp, or you can drop down and follow the Western Rim. It adds only about five miles, but it is incredible scenery on this sandstone ledge that overlooks the Colorado River. We took option two. We followed Rabbit Valley Road, mainly because my son's bike had had problems that day, and we wanted to get to camp and look at it a little bit more thoroughly. You push. <laughs> Because of the mechanical issues we had, we're skipping White Rim Trail there, and that's it. Way down there. We're riding along above it. I was just telling guys that that camp is at the top of that plateau in front of us. That's the hill we gotta get up for camp. It's diabolical. We came from all the way down there, up this road. You can still see two people way down there. Look at this view from our camp tonight. We just looked down on this incredible valley. And to top it off, we got a full moon. Good morning, day two. And this is a long one, 60 miles today. Yeah, I don't think you put any on though. What are you looking forward to on here, day two? I think the rose garden. 
Team Carbon Belt, how'd it go the first day? No issues. Uh, and your bikes didn't break down yesterday? No, no breakdowns. We did, we did unfortunately come across uh, two derailleur bikes that we had to help fix. One of them we had to, uh, she had hit a uh, rock and it had broken the cage and the torsion springs. So we were able to zip tie it together. And then another guy had another issue, struck a rock, and we helped fix his and get him going. And yeah, so you guys are getting ready to change one bike at a time. One bike at a time. Exactly. Day two opens with a rewarding downhill, followed by some chill riding across the Frisco Desert. An ancient seabed, over 70 million years old. Fun little warm-up section. Yeah. Long hard climb up to the Cisco Desert, but two years ago it was like 95 degrees in here. It's 70 today. One of the things I love about this ride is how the terrain constantly changes. We're entering the Cisco Desert here, this old ocean bed from like 70 million years ago. Now we have some flat, open, wide, sandy roads for about the next 10 miles. Day two, the long ride. Da, da, da. There's our destination, the LaSalle Mountains. In the desert, who would have thought this? It's so quiet out here. All you have is the wind, maybe a bird every now and then. I show you a sign that cracks me up every time I see it. It's gonna become almost impossible. I don't know why they say at times. Most of the time it is. Very fast descent all the way down to the Colorado River. As you ride along the riverbanks, you're subjected to these really mean wills that whip you as you ride through. Ride along down here in this ranch farmland along the river. Pretty tough area to make a living out of. Finally, you end up on the Dinosaur Diamond Prehistoric Byway, perhaps one of the best names for a road I've ever heard, and a quick ride down to Dewey Bridge along the Colorado River for lunch. That's the lunch location for day two. <laughs> Waiting for a shuttle to get us off a hill we really don't need to climb. Okay, anybody who says that shuttling is not part of real cross-country mountain biking has kind of come through this ride. Big, long, steep downhill. And then we've got 
this really tough uphill for several miles. You see where you came from way down there in the canyon? Yeah, right. Turn around, look back. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we're going. This is one of those climbs that takes you two to three hours maybe. I'll have to check when I get home. I'll let you know, I'll put it in the video somewhere. And that's the top right there. We lost my son out here. He had to get a shuttle ride to the top of the hill cause his bike wasn't working right. But now we can't find him. And I'm worried because A, he might be mid thirties, but I'm still his dad. B, he is the father of my grandchildren. And C, he's a lot nicer person than I am. Steep enough and rocky enough to be careful. But to give you an idea, here's my foot next to some of these rocks here. Slow motion fall. The dirt road drops you into Rose Garden Hill, a steep, rutted, rocky excuse of a road. That attracts four wheel drivers from around the world, and we got a ride down this. Yeah, have a good attitude here. Well, only about three or four miles to go and we gotta climb up that stupid hill there. You see a rock like that towering over you, it's gotta be seven, eight hundred to a thousand feet high. Sure puts you in your place. After a half hour climb out of the hole at the bottom of Rose Garden Hill, we're rewarded with reaching camp that night, a place that some people call the Big Room. One of the most scenic and best places I know to camp. Day three opens with two options once again. You can either do the 16 mile climb up over the LaSalle Mountains, which I've done five or six times, or take the slacker's way down Onion Creek. We're taking Onion Creek because my son's bike is not working right, and I don't think it would make the climb. Good morning, morning, morning. It's day three. Pretty tired. 
And as you can see, we found my son. Turns out that when he got dropped off at the top of the mountain, he joined up with some other riders and rode into camp. And he was a little worried about that, but he was okay. Another beautiful day. Sun is just starting to come up. Favorite party yesterday? It was a long day, but we got to ride in at sunset, and that was really beautiful. And where are you from? Santa Cruz, California. So five years on uh, Biker Pelly so far. Yeah, absolutely five years, five wonderful years. Never regretted a single one. What, what kind of math he was doing yesterday when he was climbing to take his mind off the two hours of uh, climbing? Yeah, no, I was just doing math in my head and I was working out quick calculations on maximizing the volumes and things like that. And, you know, it's a two hour climb up in Trotta to try and get my head out of my body situation. <laughs> I'm not quite the mathematician, so why do I'm going up is I sing songs from when my kids were real little, so. The wheels on the bike go round and round, round and round, round, round and round. round. And there's also Baby Beluga in the deep blue sea. I do that yeah, one too. Yeah. You know, too. Anything to get your mind off going up the hill. Yeah, absolutely right. Because when your body's in pain, your mind wants to be away from it. So you give your mind the opportunity to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, and memories, cherished memories from the past when you had your kids and they were small, right? That's a perfect place to go. All right, good talking to you. Yeah. Looking forward to the video. Favorite thing from yesterday, uh, bottom of Rose Garden Hill, knowing that the day was just about over. Favorite part of yesterday was realizing that I had enough strength to go back up to where we had just been to see a number of dune buggies go up the hill of Rose Garden. Huge towering cliffs over top of you here. You just feel like an ant down in here. This canyon just keeps getting narrower and narrower here on this little bridge. You're looking down a good 70, 80 feet to the stream down there. That well, one got me wet. We're headed that way.
Very reminds me of Bedrock from the Flintstones. Uh-oh. JP's got an issue. Jonathan's bike broke for the second time. Rear wheel won't even turn, so I has to just kind of carry or push it. Oh, I let him ride my bike down because I've done this five or six times before, and I took the shuttle. I got evacuated out the camp. Bye, Jonathan. Which was kind of fun, riding down in the truck on the Colorado River. So on the way in, Jonathan's bike broke again, and uh, we had to get him shuttled out. What we decided to do, because I've done this ride several times before, is I gave him my bike, and I got the rescue service being hauled out. That way he could experience the full ride and see all the trails coming down to Moab. And I think it worked out well. He just showed up. All that was left was a well-earned final meal, packing all our stuff, and getting back to our cars in Grand Junction. Oh, and sharing our final thoughts as well. Thank you so much for coming, and welcome to the end of Biker Pelt. Getting up and putting your butt on a seat on day three, well, that's a real challenge. Very few people will ever do that or ever accomplish what it is you guys have accomplished here this weekend. And that's what I want you to take home with you. This is more than just an adventure. It's more than just a fun weekend. This is a transformational experience, I hope, for each one of you. And then all of you grow from it in some way or another that you take with you and it just <laughs> elevates your game for the rest of your life. It does help Shannon. Cool. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. How did your bikes hold up through Biker Pelly? Hey Dave, yeah, we had a great time. It performed really, really well. We didn't have any derailleur issues. It's kind of somewhat fun that we actually were able to help uh, two traditional derailleur systems that had mechanicals. We were able to help on the side of the road. But anyway, we had no issues, really good chance to demonstrate the durability. That's pretty incredible. What was your highlight of the ride? Um, for me personally, I. I rode with a friend of mine, it was his 10th ride, it was my first ride. He had never done porcupine before, because by the time you get to porcupine, you've ridden 150 miles. It just seems like, oh, it's you know, one thing you don't need to do. So we rode that um, yesterday and had a great time. But it's, and then a great, great way to finish it off coming into Moab. What was your highlight from yesterday's ride, Jonathan? Falcon Flow. On oh, your father's bike. Yep. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've known these guys for four years or five years on the ride? 19, the first ride we did at 29. And Kira, you were 13 then? Hi, I'm Joel. Have a great day today. I'm Kira, I'm 13, <laughs> and today went pretty well. Uh, you know, I really like Eagle Eye and um, uh, Hawk Glide. Nice drops and rollers and ledges. It was, those were fun. <laughs> so we did Eagle's Eye and Hawk Glide, which was fun. I really enjoyed that. And then I asked him, to check the maps and like the elevation gain, I wanted to bail out on the sand flats because I was tired. He was like, no, it's fine, it's only five miles. Five miles of uphill. And you're blaming this on your dad? Yeah, okay. that's what I do, I'm I 17. Guess. Next year, you also have to bring your granddaughter, Evie. I really want to meet her. I'm kind of sad that it's over, but at the same time, it's kind of good to get back home. But it's getting out and exploring and doing things like this that are one of the real treasures of life. Get outside your comfort level and do something that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Till next year, Emily. Till next year. Thanks for coming. Final stats, 130 to 160 miles, depending on the loops that you take. Climbing, 9,000 to 13,000 feet, once again, depending which route you go. And figure on six to nine hours a day on the bike. If you want to see more bicycling videos, click the link over here. If you'd like to see some of my normal stuff that I put on the caffeinated bio, click over here and you'll see my most recent video.